Hi friends, I am so excited for today's video where I was asked to choose five of my personal favorite cheerleading routines that I was either in or that I have coached. If you do not know, my name is John Davenport. I am an all-star cheerleading coach at Cheer Athletics in Plano, Texas. I have been at CA for 14 years and it all started when I was 17 years old and decided to move from a very, very small town in Kansas to pursue my dream of cheering at CA. Speaking of Kansas, I have to give a shout out to my very first all-star cheerleading coach, Christy Shaw from Advanced Cheer All-Stars, and to my next cheerleading coach, Susan Brummer from Cheer Eclipse. Seriously, they are two of the most amazing, inspirational, influential people in my life. They helped me develop a love for a sport, and they showed me how people outside of your family can genuinely love you and take interest in you. So shout out to those two women. I absolutely love you. So when I was asked to choose three to five routines, I knew I was going to choose five, but I didn't know how difficult it was going to be because there are so many routines that I either cheered in or that I have coached that bring back so many emotions and so many memories, and I could talk about any routine for hours so I just picked one um, from each of my teams in the past and made a list and let's get into it. So my first team I was on at True Athletics was Wildcats in 2010 and this is what I mentioned that I moved from Kansas. I literally packed all of my stuff into a huge purple bag and I bought a Greyhound ticket and a one-way ticket and I got on a Greyhound bus and Literally, the rest is history. Um, Wildcats in 2010, I remember walking into my first practice and being greeted by the team, like so welcoming and so warming. And the coaches were so intrigued with me and my skill set and genuinely were so excited, I guess, to allow me to be a part of their program. And so this year really did change the way that I viewed cheerleading. I think the first couple of seasons, it was about me and about being a sport. And when I got to cheer athletics, it opened my eyes to how much opportunity there was within cheerleading. I remember their coaches doing a bunch of choreography jobs, and I remember their athletes, you know, making pro X videos or several types of things, just so much opportunity. And this season, I was so lucky enough to cheer with some of the best athletes in the entire world, like Ty Hill. Chris Muniz, Chelsea Boleyn, Ambro Brannon, literally everyone on the team. I should go down the entire roster, but the team was absolutely insane and stacked with talent. And it kind of put me like in a reality check. Like in Kansas, I was so used to like wanting to be the best and growing to be the best. But then when I got to Wildcats, I was literally not the best. Um, it was a whole nother environment of work ethic and physical push, but I am so grateful for that experience. I literally can watch that routine or look at pictures or look back at moments and just get emotional because it truly set me up for where I am today. If you were on Wildcats in 2010 or coached me that year, thank you so much for an amazing time, amazing memories. Seriously, we are all so lucky and so blessed and I will cherish that experience and that season forever. So really that season on Wildcats solidified my love for CA and the people there and that's really when it inspired me to continue cheering there and to learn about coaching if that makes sense. So I went from like being a cheerleader to being an aspired coach. So when I was at Cheetah's practice in 2011 or if I was as an athlete or if I was at Wildcats practice in 2012, I was aware of what I was supposed to be doing as an athlete and checked in on that. Um, mindset but then I was also aware of what the coaches were doing or what they were saying or how they were responding because I was using that opportunity to learn and to grow I mean I was so lucky to have the coaches that I did at Cheer Athletics they are the complete reason why I am the coach that I am today and so if you're someone who is expiring to be a coach or 
anything in a field that you love, kind of have that athlete mindset and then an aspiring coach's mindset because that's kind of what led me into kind of talking about the next routine. The next routine that I want to talk about is Triathletic Swoosh Cats 2017, my first time winning Worlds as an all-star coach. And it was seriously such an iconic moment for me and the people that I worked with and the team because Swoosh Cats were already a successful team, a successful brand. They had just won Worlds the year before. And so I kind of went into it having expectations and wanting to go back to back and um, thinking of that nature. And the kids on Swoosh Cats, I had either coached on Panthers or I had coached on Jungle Cats or I had coached on Sassy Cats. So a bunch of the kids that I had previously coached ended up on this team and it was just it was just a love for a cheer. The people on that team were so mature, they were so experienced, they were so passionate, and that's really what made that team successful. And one of my favorite memories of Swoosh Cats in 2017 was honestly World Finals. I remember being backstage, we had done our warm-up, we had completed the warm-up, and one of the USASF officials had came over, and I believe it was the Stingrays team in our division, they unfortunately had an injury, and so they asked us if we wanted to go at our normal time, or if we wanted to wait for the team with the injury to rewarm up, perform, and for us to go if we still wanted to go last. And we let the team decide what they wanted, and I remember like the team collectively saying they wanted to go last. No matter what, they wanted to be the last team of the day. And so I think we sat around for almost 30 to 45 minutes after doing our warm up, and then had to re-warm up our entire routine. And then after that, we went out to literally nail one of, I have chills right now, to nail one of the most iconic cheerleading routines that has been laid out. Seriously, the technique, the performance, the confidence, the choreography, it was just what I call like a cheerleading perfection moment where all of the pieces fell into place, all of your worries, all of your doubts went away, and everything was working out the way that you wanted to. And those kids deserved it. Um, those practices were so intense. We called them sweaty swoosh because they were always like the sweatiest in the gym. So swoosh 2017 brings back so many amazing emotions and memories for me um, because of those kids and because of those coaches and just the overall vibe of the team. So forever grateful, forever blessed for swoosh 2017 SM4 dub. So the next routine that I want to share with you guys is a Sassy Cats routine. This team um, has my heart because we started this team, I think, eight or nine years ago, developed the name, developed the division, and have built um, a legacy and a culture that is still iconic to this day. I could literally talk about any Sassy Cat routine and have just an emotional reaction because... There's just something about the vibe and the standard of this team that is so special. And I'm excited to share the 2017 routine with you guys. And I think this season was so special because we had so many veterans on the team who had been on the first year of Sassy and the second year of Sassy. And then um, third time was the charm when we ended up winning grand at NCA in the arena. This is when level four teams went in the arena. And then we also ended up winning Summit that year. So after three years, basically, of building a team and building a culture, we were able to reach our goals of being NCA and Summit champs. But besides, like, the accolades and the awards, this routine and these kids will always be something so special to the group of coaches and to myself because the caliber of the skill set that these kids we're doing was absolutely insane. If you just go back and watch the stunt section, the invert from the low, the high to high full around from a body position, the scale drop full and a half, the difficulty in our pyramid still level four teams are not doing today. Like the difficulty that they were doing in this routine still is not even being shown today. And so it's something that I hope those athletes and I know that our coaches have a lot of pride in is that they were able to go out there and do a really difficult level four routine and almost make it look effortless and flawless. And so these girls and this team um, are just so special. A funny memory that I have um, from this team is 
NCA finals <laughs> um, from 2017. Like I said, this is the first time that we go into the arena and we were marked with a building fall. Um, and it was either a bobble or a fall. I knew it was going to be iffy, but um, had to fight for my team. And so we get the score sheets. We see we have a building fall. I think it was worth 0.75 back then. We're like, we have to go to AccuScore. We have to argue it. And so I remember being in AccuScore, waiting in line, and the team rep is like blowing up my phone that the teams are walking on the stage and awards were happening. And I'm like, how can awards be happening when I'm at AccuScore right now trying to, you know, argue the score sheets. And so I'm just waiting patiently and the teams are on and I can like hear them calling like, I think ninth place and eighth place. And I'm like panicking. And so I just run to the arena. I'm like, I'm not missing awards, like I'm not missing awards. And so I run to the arena, whatever happens, happens. We ended up winning um, first and I believe grand. I think we ended up winning grand that year. I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but um, with the building fall marked on the score sheet and that is just one of my favorite memories because I was so stressed, so nervous and everything ended up working out. All of our dreams came true and I believe that year specifically in 2017 helped build the further foundation for winning NCA and winning Summit the following year and creating a culture and a standard that many girls want to be a part of. So Sassy 2017, definitely a fond memory in my heart forever. The next year of routines, I couldn't choose between these two teams because honestly, they both were absolutely amazing, absolutely incredible. And that would be Cheer Athletics Kitty Cats and Cheer Athletics Cougars in 2019. When I watch both of those videos, I have the same feelings and the same emotions coaching almost 50 youth kids to reach that level of execution and that level of almost perfection still seems unreal. If I watch Kitty Cat squad tumbling from that year, I'm still shocked that those kids and that us coaches were able to produce something that was just so clean and so well executed because we know where we started. Um, we know what the summer looked like and so um, we have so much pride in that. And for Cougars, like the building creativity, the building <laughs> execution, just in general, um, those two teams were jaw dropping. And I think my favorite memory of Kitty Cats that year was Summit Finals, um, just because it was the last time we were ever going to do this routine. I think it was like the fifth or sixth time in a row we were going for the Summit Championship. And I remember never being more nervous in my entire life. I felt so much pressure. I felt so much nerves. I felt like I was going to cry like as they were walking on. And then they hit the routine like the best we had ever did it. And we ended up getting a 96, I think 667, which was the highest score of Summit that year. I think we were the grand champions of the entire event. And this is with a youth team doing level one skills. It just feels good to know that you're giving these kids memories and you're giving them a foundation to follow a sport and to continue a sport that they love and that they can develop a passion for. Cougars in 2019 is such um, a soft subject for me because we were going into Summit um, day two into first place and then we nailed um, the best routine of our lives in day two and walked away with second place. Um, now it is what it is, but back then it was excruciating, it was heartbreaking, it was hard to find words um, and to make our kids feel better. But now um, I watch that video with so much pride and those kids that were on Cougars in 2019 are now on Sassy Cats or Worlds teams. And so the bigger picture is there now and the rewards and the benefits that we gained from that season are there. But Please, if you want to watch amazing lower level teams, watch Cheer Athletics Kitty Cats from 2019 and Cheer Athletics Cougars from 2019. It will absolutely blow your mind. So my last routine that I have to talk about would be Cheer Athletics Panthers 2018, the year that we broke the curse. This season is so special to me for so many reasons and I plan on doing a video on just this season alone for my YouTube channel. There are so many amazing memories or stories that I could share from this season, but I think ultimately what I want to share is the amount of effort and the amount of work and the amount of training that it went into that success. That team was the hardest working team. They loved each other so much. They were so mentally tough. They were so mentally driven. And um, they did it because they wanted to do it. And 
this season I think was one of my favorite seasons because it helped shift my mentality as a coach. It helped open my eyes to how to approach practices or how to approach pressure like situations. And so Panthers 2018 in NCA specifically was a dream. Like I mentioned in a podcast earlier before at NCA prelims, that was the first time we had ever actually hit our routine at a competition, zero deductions. And to do that on the biggest stage um, in the world for cheerleading kind of boosted our confidence. It boosted our self-esteem. And I genuinely believe that set us up for success for the rest of the season. We went out day two and nailed a routine deduction free and walked away with NCA grand champion and the highest score of all of the world's teams. And still saying that right now, I can think about those girls' faces um, at awards. And I can think about the physical and mental struggles that we went through with all of the pressure of the curse and social media and whoever else basically saying that we wouldn't do it or they couldn't do it. And then going into Worlds that year specifically, every single team in large senior was absolutely incredible. I believe every team had a zero deduction routine. And so just to come out on top with the people that I love the most, which would be those coaches and those athletes, is genuinely just an iconic memory, an iconic season, and something that I am so blessed and so grateful to be a part of. It had been 12 years since Panthers had one large senior um, until we did it in 2018, and I had been coaching Panthers for... That was my fifth year coaching Panthers. I believe when I started coaching Panthers, my first year we got third, my second year we got third, my next year we got second, my next year we got second, and then finally we won the gold, if that's correct. My memory is kind of all over the place, but that group of girls will always hold a special place in my heart and all of the coaches' heart, and... If you want to watch good cheerleading, Triathletics Panthers 2018, hands down, iconic. Thank you guys for watching and to the cheer bus for having me. It was so much fun going down memory lane with you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my personal YouTube channel where I share cheerleading tips and tricks, educational and motivational content, and I also have a vlog series where we go behind the scenes of Panthers, Cheetahs, and Sassy Cats practices as we prepare for this year of All-Star Cheer. Hope to see you in this video. Bye! Um, that was pretty good. That should be good. Um...